I'm uh, Roger Robson. I live over in uh, Cumbria at the moment, but I'm an Anak lad. Went to the Duke School at Anak and uh, passed all my exams and went to Durham. But in the meantime, back home, my father was a Maori catcher. My mother was a shepherd's daughter, and I maintained big contacts, very loving contacts with that aspect of my life. So that um, as I got older, um, I would be catching Maoris with my father uh, in the Christmas holidays. I'd be doing a hill lambing at uh, my Uncle Jack's farm, Lumbilo, on the Anik Rothbury Road, with a 300 acres of heather on the farm. And um, in the summer, I used to work as a hayman for my mother's cousin up at Otterburn. And it was like stepping back like 30, 40, 50 years in time when you went to these places. So I, as I said in the introduction of my book, I, I think I was born a Victorian because I, I was uh, the, the son of um, big families. My father was from a family of ten and he was one of the younger ones. My mother from a family of nine and she was the sort of second or third youngest. So I, I, I was just part of that, their world, you know, it's a different world. We used to go around on a Sunday visiting as it was the country custom at the time. You just turned up and you got your tea. And it was a world of Clydesdale horses and earth closets and paraffin lamps, tilly lamps, if you're modern, and uh, big Katy gardens and black-faced sheep and hairy cattle and all. And, and that was a, uh, the world I came from. And I've never left it, really. Now, the, uh, uh, the book captures a lot of that spirit, doesn't it? But I believe that uh, you call it a a work of uh, faction. What's that, what's that about? Yeah, well, a lot of it comes directly from my father's stories. It's oral history, really, my, the Robson oral history. And he must have talked to me and talked to me and told stories and polished them up and this sort of thing. And uh, when I started to write for, I did quite a lot of the stories for the Northumbrian, and I'll, I'll take some bits of his stories. Uh, the, so the, the book's written about real people and incidents that really happen, but there's also uh, parts which are really from my imagination. So the same people, and, and it's all as authentic as you can imagine, um, but the, they are made up, so they're, they're a mixture of fact and fiction, the faction. Roger paused and looked down over the usually burn to where the locals gathered as usual, at the smithy, as usual, and the smithy's the way down here. It looks like you've got some garages now. What cheer, lads? shouted Willie with his three horses. They're riding back from Morpeth M- Horse Fair. Several pairs of eyes peered up into the setting sun and saw above them riding bareback, high on the arched neck of the biggest and finest horse in the area, a young man, confident and in control, Roger Robson, a long lay, my father. And why did you think that it was important to uh, to put all these memories and stories down in, in writing? Well, I, I didn't make a you know big decision. I must put all these things down. I, I simply started writing one story at a time. Um, the first one I wrote was just really to put my head in order uh, when I'd been looking around an old estate with a, where the house was big, big stately home was being demolished. And I put my thoughts in order by writing something. No sense of writing a book or being published or anything like that. And that these things accumulated. And uh, I started writing for the Northumbrian. I thought they needed, when Henry Brewis, that wonderful writing, writer about farming uh, <laughs> incidents, uh, died, I think the Northumbrian lacked people. And uh, so I sent a, a, a short story up, and uh, Stuart Bonney, the editor, uh, asked me to do a, uh, three stories a year for the Northumbrian, and I kept going. I, I wrote eight stories then. Um, now, I, I believe that uh, you became a bit uh, uh, dispirited and lost your mojo for writing when uh, your farm was hit by the foot and mouth crisis. Is that right? Yeah, this is uh, that was about the worst time in my life, really. Um, you know, what, you survived it, but. It really was, it did hit you hard when you'd, um, you know, I had pedigree cattle that used to come up to be scratched and, uh, and had all had names and everything and I had a flock of black-faced sheep and uh, come one day suddenly they, they were they killed off and I mean I 
I, had, I felt that I had to be there to make sure everything was carried out properly. So I was quietly putting the cattle into the cattle crush, to nice and quietly, come on, let's get in there, and bang, and she was dead and pulled away with a tractor and chains. And the next one, come on, lass, come on, in you go. And I mean, uh, at the finish of it all, I was in my tractor, uh, tidying up a bit, and uh, I, I found I was running into gate posts and fences, uh, and uh, I stopped the tractor, and I just howled for 20 minutes, absolutely howled. But and fortunately, uh, th those days are behind you now, and you've, uh, yeah. you, you've regained your, uh, your love for writing. Yeah, I, I, re I did really enjoy the writing, and when I got back to it, just only last year, I uh, my two cousins nagged me to start writing the stories again. They had enjoyed them in the past. And uh, again, I found that love of writing that uh, I'd lost. Uh, it was uh, very wholesome for me to, to write stories. Now the, the world that you talk about is uh, is a world which is uh, which is long gone. But do you think that um, there are elements of that past life which uh, which are missed today? Well, I I think you know the, the in some ways it is a historical document. But the, uh, so many of the elements are still there with strength. There are still people with the books called the understanding, and it's the understanding of your environment. It's the understanding that exists between people who are like-minded and, 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 and uh, know what's going on and uh, without being uh, uh, organized, uh, there is an understanding between them. So the whole book sees that as a great virtue and it still exists now. I mean, uh, I, I have a small farm and um, when my, um, I have a neighbor and uh, we just don't know who owes who what, so money doesn't come into it. I've got bales in my stack of bales that belong to him. Uh, he, he, looks at, he looked after the place for five weeks when I was in Australia once. And, you know, all these sort of things. We have an understanding, nothing written down. It's just that I know him and what he stands for and he knows me. And we have the deepest respect for each other. And do you think uh, there's another book in you yet? Uh, well, it's taken about t uh, 20 years between books, but yes, I, I've got one or two stories. I mean, the, the story that I was going to write when I was hit by foot and mouth disease is still there to be written. And uh, so, there are, I've got three or four stories in mind, and uh, if I start writing for the Northumbrian again, it's a good uh, inspiration if I can get them to accept my stories.